Hi, welcome to the Numerics Video Blog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. Today we're going to talk about the fundamental review of the trading book, Basel's introduction and arguably the first major rewrite of market risk guidelines for over a decade. Joining me today is Sammy Colas, Risk Product Specialist at Numerics. Sammy, welcome. Thank you for having me, Jim. All right, so let's just start at the beginning. We have the sensitivity-based approach and we have the internal model-based approach. Why don't you just give us a quick break breakdown of both approaches and some of the impacts as it relates to capital. Yes, absolutely. So let me start with the uh, standardized approach. Um, there is really three segments to it. Uh, when banks will have to compute these capital charges, they will have to first compute a sensitivity-based capital charge. On top of this charge, they will have to have a, uh, a default risk charge and then a residual risk add-on. And I can go into a little more details in, uh, in all these three charges if you want. Okay. And as it relates to the internal model approach, how is that different? Yes, yeah, so internal model approach, it's a risk-based approach uh, which the banks can choose to, uh, to use to, to report their capital charges. It will uh, uh, more than likely be lower capital charges, but having said that, even though banks want to use or will use the internal model approach to, uh, to uh, uh, report their charges, they will still need to compute the standardized approach uh, 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 capital charges. Why? For two reasons. First, as a benchmark, the regulator wants the banks to uh, compare their numbers on a monthly basis. And second, more importantly, as a fallback, meaning that uh, uh, under the internal model approach, uh, banks will have to pass rigorous backtesting and PNL attribution tests. And should they fail these tests, they will have to revert back to the standardized approach. So you bring up um, uh, the backtesting issue. So the backbone of market risk uh, management for many, many years has been VAR. But with Basel and FRTB, we're now starting to see the introduction of expected shortfall and as well as looking at tail risk. What are some of the challenges that are stressing existing infrastructures as banks are starting to have to move to this kind of new environment if they're going to get optimal capital relief under IMA? Yes, so uh, uh, there's going to be many challenges. The first one will be a uh, data challenge. Data will be coming from everywhere. Uh, at the desk level, they will need trade information, uh, market data, obviously, but also storing historical data. Because of these rigorous backtesting and PL attribution exercises, banks will have to store all of this data, potentially going back in the past to rerun capital computations and so forth. Um, on top of this, these capital charges are at the desk level, meaning that the risk uh, models used at the desk level could be different across desk, and they will need to be aggregated at the uh, at the bank level at some point. So they will need to have take. It's going to be a big uh, infrastructure uh, uh, problem. So now that you bring up an interesting point, so uh, a lot of systems have been designed differently as it related to risk management systems uh, versus front office models. A lot of institutions have invested millions and millions of dollars in front office models versus you know risk systems that were designed to be more portfolio analytics. What are some of the challenges in terms of reconciling those models as it has such an implication for PLL attribution? Yeah, so that's exactly the purpose of this uh, uh, PNL attribution test. So basically, uh, why do banks need to run this test? So first off, to understand again, these tests will be validating the risk management models at the desk level, meaning that regulators want to understand and make sure that whatever risk factor is being used in the risk management model at the desk level is uh, uh, sufficient enough, that the set of risk factors are sufficient enough to explain the PNL at the desk level. So it's really uh, uh, getting this trust and that the internal models used to compute these capital charges are actually uh, accurate enough. So one of the other areas that has come into the IMA approach is really been around model validation. Um, how is, you know, the, the definitive guidelines, uh, guideline in this is Fed SR 11, um, introduced a couple of years ago. A lot of documents are referring back to that. What changes uh, in the FRTB framework around model validation at this point? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the uh, the final rules were just written uh, as of January, uh, were just published as of January 2016, and, and they're ex uh, expected to be uh, 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 put in place in January 2019 under local regulations, so it's still, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, an open topic. But there will be external auditors that will need to validate uh, specifically, uh, specifically these internal models. So we expect uh, 
to have banks reaching out to external auditors to actually help them validate their models, making sure that they can pass the backtesting exercises and, and the PL attribution exercises. So as these teams are coming together, what would you say, where's the starting point? Is it looking at existing ar architecture and figuring out how to adapt, or are there other challenges that institutions should be thinking about as they're looking uh, uh, to implement these guidelines? Yeah, so I think uh, really, so we, we discussed a lot about the data, but I think in parallel, uh, a really, really hot topic will be desk optimization capital structure because uh, the, the Basel Committee really is a quantitative impact study showing that on average, uh, used under the uh, internal model approach, the capital charges will increase by 41% with this new framework, this new FRTB framework compa compared to the current one. So banks will definitely try to uh, optimize their desk, assess the profitability of desk even, and maybe split some of them I want to thank Sammy Cullis for his thoughts on FRTB. And of course, stay up to date on all that Numerics is doing for FRTB via our resource page on numerics.com. You can check out a new white paper on FRTB, finalized but far from the finish line, as well as a replay of our webinar on FRTB CVA. Of course, we always want to talk about the topics that you want to talk about. Follow us on LinkedIn and on Twitter at NX Analytics. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. Thanks for joining.